the Joe Rogan experience. Your um, your um, coffee thing. If you're if you're really into it, you get into the flavors and you get into drinking it black. I used to always add cream to my coffee, and I still do if I get Starbucks. Because no offense, Starbucks, but generally speaking, their black coffee does not taste that good. It's, a lot of it is like overcooked and burnt. It's Did like, you? I read that How, Howard Schultz's um, biography. And it like turned me into a huge Starbucks fan because the guy's just so inspirational. You know, he like oh, he's brought coffee. He brought coffee culture to America. Like, I mean, coffee didn't exist here before. Like the espresso yeah. culture and espresso bars. He just, you know, for whether you like the coffee or don't or whatever you say, he was. It's really phenomenal what he's Well, done. they have that one machine. If you go to that one machine, that what's it called? A clover? Yeah, like sucks the coffee. Yeah, what is that called? <laughs> yeah. Is that a clove? Yeah, but I think Starbucks like bought them all, right? Because yes. Because they were like, yeah. this is too good. Nobody yes. else got this. He, no, yeah. he partnered with, the, oh, okay. it's part of his book. He like found this guy that was doing this thing and he was like, I want to partner with you and bring this to the world. It's like. It's a genius yeah. piece of kit. There was a Starbucks near my house in California that had one and I used to always get that. I would drink black. But other than that, I just pour some cream in there and it's good enough. But I generally like a uh, dark roast black coffee. And I've, I've gotten, it's a thing that's like you get accustomed to the flavor and the taste. Yeah, that's the machine. Yeah. It's really wild. Like you, you pour the beans in there and then you have to kind of whisk it and stir it. And there's some sort of a, a vacuum, pro it is called a clover, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a vacuum process that creates the coffee and it's the perfect temperature coffee and then you got this weird hockey puck of grounds that come to the top and then they just sort of scrape that hockey puck yeah, they've got off. got their little squeegee. It's amazing. But I, so this perfect. is my, Matt and I have this conversation all the time because I'm like, you know, part of coffee culture at a coffee bar is the like theater of it all. Yes. And so when you go to coffee, but then I'm like, we're writing this cookbook and I'm like, dude, can we just actually make coffee and taste it all these different ways and try and break down what's really important like do i gotta steep the beans and then wait 10 minutes and then start again and get the rest of the water in there do i have to you know is that is that a, is that a blooming process really matter like how long before i grind the beans and we came to the conclusion that like oh some of the things are and 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 look if you got a morning tradition that includes you know putting on your monocle and like putting on your bow tie <laughs> Fucking hand your grinding monocle. your beans. That's hilarious. <laughs> your in there. But, but for me, we were like, actually, fresh grinding your beans makes a huge difference. And mm. then I love a pour over coffee. Um, and and blooming the coffee matters. Like getting it getting it wet first and then starting and then putting a little more water in afterwards so it has some time. So to, you know you know what I'm talking no. about? No, explain that. So what, what, Matt wrote the recipe in the cookbook, but basically it's like, you know, a, an old school glass drip coffee maker actually makes really great coffee, like an old bun machine, mm -hmm. where the drip comes down slow so it gets the, 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 the ground coffee wet and it gives it a chance to like absorb the water and then the flavor to filter out. Whereas if you just pour all the water over dry beans right away. Like a French press. It doesn't, well, French press, it steeps it in there, right? right. Like French press, you pour it in, you let it steep in there, and then you strain Plunge. it out. But a lot of people, when, when they do like a pour over coffee or whatever they're doing, they just put the beans in their filter, ground beans in their filter, pour the hot water over and let it drain through. And you leave a lot of the flavor behind. Whereas if you get it wet, let it sit for a minute, and then pour the rest of the water through, you have you get more extraction of the flavor. So when you say get it wet, like how wet? Well, I put 20% of the water in. So like for me, I do 21 grams of coffee and 350 grams of water. And Jesus. that's a that's an eight hour. Very specific. <laughs> well, everything is this way. I'm a psycho about everything I do. I mean, salting meat, I got I do it by the by the percentage weight. Everything's percentage weight for me. Really? You don't just like salt bay it? And... No, no, no. I mean I do the salt bay after I weigh it first. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Um, no, everything everything for me is 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 that's the way you get great consistency and that's the way you can really figure out what you did wrong and get it better is by by adjusting it incrementally, right? Mm. Like so the that that twenty one grams of, of of ground coffee for for you know whatever it is a full size cup of coffee what is this is a beautiful mug. do I get to keep this mug? oh yeah sure really? yeah. is that a kind of, I just yeah. offered that to no, myself no no it's for you yeah it's for I like 100%. this mug it's for you thank you that would be a great thank you I'll You're drink welcome. my coffee and look at you All right. every day beautiful um, I'll get weird <laughs> and, uh, 
it's handsome. Um, and uh, but so I take I take the first hundred grams of water and I pour it over, and then I go and I take my my I do some of my morning activities like I'll, before I start the shower I do my and then I come back and I finish the coffee the other. Well, how much time grams. in between? Depends upon what I have for dinner the night before, really. Oh, it's so like, you take a shit. I take a shit, and then yeah. I come back and I'm finished. But so you know, like 15 minutes. Yeah, it could be oh. any amount of time. It's just really it should it, it'll. I don't like to drink my coffee super hot, so I don't mind that extra time to cool it down a bit. Mm. But I think you just want to give it about two minutes for the coffee to bloom for to for the whatever you know. There are scientists that would explain like the starches are absorbing the water, which is allowing them to release. The, because if you think about pouring coffee over, it's like little ground pebbles of coffee beans. You pour the water over. And you want the water to have a chance to leach out the flavor that's inside of the ground. And like espresso is really fast and you grind it really, really fine, right? Whereas maybe a French press is going to steep for quite a while. So you grind it quite a bit coarser. And so pour over maybe is somewhere in between, but it still needs a few, few seconds to steep. But that's what you prefer, the pour over. Yeah, I'm a pour over guy. 